Hey y'all, how you doing? Welcome back to my channel. I am loving life freely. If you're new here, welcome. If you're well, I'm brand new to my community, I'd love to say welcome to you. If you're new to reselling and you're literally just kind of starting out and you just happen to bump upon my uh, my video here, welcome to the new resell not new reselling community. We've been around for a while. Welcome to the reselling community. Um, I'm so excited about your new journey that you're starting. And I do hope that you enjoy it as much as of a lot of us resellers who've been around for a little while. Um, I am not seasoned by any means. I've been around for about two and a half years, really full time for about a year and a half. But there are some people who have been reselling for three, four, five, even 10, 20 years, and they're still reselling. So yes, it is something you can do part time on your own, aside from a job or long term, but welcome. I'm so excited about the um, about what you're about ready to embark on. I mentioned last week, if you're feeling overwhelmed and you're new to reselling, I understand where you're coming from, but please do not feel overwhelmed. This is the best time right now to just gather the information you have um, and get started. Um, but don't feel overwhelmed because there's so much community in reselling and there are so many people who are more than willing to answer your questions. Um, even here, if you have a question about reselling or not sure what to do with something, feel free to drop it down below, whether myself or other people who are seasoned that are watching this video. And if you are seasoned and you see a question, please feel free to give input and feedback. There is a lot of reselling community here, you guys, um, which is something I'm going to be talking about today. Um, anyway, I am Loving Life Freely. I am a full-time reseller on eBay, Poshmark, and Macari, and I do um, lives as well with kids' clothes. And um, I'm excited about today's weekly reseller chat. We're going to talk about some really great ways as a reseller we can make more sales. So stay tuned. Okay, you guys, I'm going to have you hold on for just a second. Okay, sorry about that. My fan is on, but it was blowing right at me, throwing my papers everywhere. Um, today, you guys, I want to talk about a topic, especially since we have the holiday season coming up, um, but not just the holiday season, y'all. Um, any time of the year, there are ways that we can be encouraging our listings to be selling more, no matter what platform you, you list on, okay? Well, since I moved that fan, it feels hotter. <laughs> I may just simply hold on to my pages and let the fan hit me. Hold on. Okay, we are back. Sorry about that, guys. A little detour. Um, we are over 100 degrees here. I know everybody else has been talking about, you know, we've been over 100 degrees for over a month. We did hit over 100 degrees today. We're going to be doing that for the next few days, so I definitely have the fan on me right now. And honestly, I have to be really honest with you, speaking of temperatures, I know it's hot, and I, I appreciate that. And I appreciate how you all have been enduring this for weeks already. Those of you who live in California, Texas, Florida, and all those southern states, but I'm going to be really honest with you. I know it's hot, but I'm really, really enjoying it. I'm still really enjoying my, my mornings, in, first thing in the morning between 6 and 6.30. I'm out on my patio. The sun's rising. I'm enjoying it, y'all, because before we know it, winter's going to hit. And I'm appreciating the beautiful weather that God is giving us right now. Um, just the breezes, the sunshine. Yes, it's hot. But I, I'm just, I'm taking it and I'm soaking it all in because I'm just really, really appreciating it. Because our winters here are so much longer than our summers. So yeah, I'm enjoying it. Um, I'm one of those weird ones that I'm just I'm just taking advantage of what we're enjoying right now, right? Okay. I um, Just personally here, our personal and our business update here. This week has actually been a little bit easier than the last couple weeks. I'm, I'm still kind of recovering from, a, from my um, ankle being twisted. I decided to go out Saturday. We had so much to do, not even just business related, but I had errands to run, house to do, to, uh, trucks to take care of, and all kinds of stuff. We went out to our colony and got some more meat. It just feels like Saturdays, you're always trying to catch up from the stuff you couldn't get done during the week. Am I right, guys? Am I right? So my husband and I did, went out we got our meat supply, all that taken care of. We got some eggs and all that, so we're good there for a while. Um, and I decided, you know what, we're going to come back. I'm going to mow the lawn for you, babe, because I know you got so many things on your plate right now. He has some stuff to take care of. You all remember he is still doing schoolwork and everything. So on top of other stuff that he's done around the house, prepping for the winter season, it just feels like him and I both have so much stuff to do on Saturdays. 
Um, so I, again, I decided to go out and mow the lawn for him so we didn't have to take care of that. Now y'all remember that I twisted my ankle about a week and a half ago. I've been doing better. It still hurts a little bit when I move certain ways on the inside of my ankle. But I thought, you know what, I'll just be really mindful with how I'm doing it with the lawnmower. You know, you turn, you're moving, you're shifting, all that stuff, right? I, I told myself, I'll just be careful. Well, it was really hot that afternoon, too. Um, I would say it's probably high 80s, maybe even low 90s when I was out there. And I should have been smarter about it. And I was out there, and I got to the back part of our property. And I'm probably maybe a half hour done from, a half hour away from being done with mowing everything. And I'm out there, and I'm just, I'm pushing through, I'm pushing through. And the next thing I know, you know what? Even though I'd already stopped once to get water, I decided to stop and get water. I went back out to try and finish it, and I just physically couldn't do it. And I came inside, I told my husband, I said, babe, I'm so sorry, but I just can't finish the back piece. He looked at me, and he's like, are you okay? I'm like, yeah, why? I'm just really, really tired. My ankle's a little sore. He's like, honey, I don't think you realize it, but your face is beat red. And I went and looked at myself, and I couldn't get up right away. I was just, I couldn't even move. I was so physically tired, and I was so hot. He was looking at me kind of concerned. He's like, are you sure you're okay? I'm like, yeah, I just, I need to relax because I have no energy to get up right now. He's like, sweetheart, I really think you should just even just go take a cold shower. Just cool off. I said, I'll do that in a minute because I literally physically just couldn't move. I was so tired. Um, I finally got up. He went to go put the lawnmower away for me because I asked him to do that. And, of course, he was more than happy to do that because I left it out in the field. Um, so he went out to go do that and kind of clean up the patio because we had some, you know, hoses around there and stuff. And uh, he was just kind of doing some cleanup on some things that I hadn't had a chance to mow. And um, I finally went in to go take a cool shower. And I looked at myself in the mirror. No kidding. My face was beet red. It was no wonder it was so hot. My body was just really overheated. Um, so, yeah, I did that. And it took me a little bit of time for my body to cool down. I actually just ended up going into my bedroom for a little bit because we have a fan. And I just I was letting the, the fan just hit me. Um... I was in there for a couple hours just working on my laptop, doing some business, on uh, just hanging out. It took me a couple hours for my body just really, really cooled down. So I didn't do the smart thing with that. Plus, I really overworked my ankle. My ankle was kind of sore. I ended up going to church the next day because I really just needed a down day. Um, so, yeah, I, get, I did. In Monday morning, I did finish that back piece. <coughs> it wasn't much, but my husband did tell me, he says, I want you to take it easy because he knows my ankle's still injured. And if I move it a certain way, it's still really kind of sore. Um, so I got that done. <laughs> I know. I know. But you know, sometimes you just have to do what you got to do, right? Anywho. Um, so no, it was just a really busy weekend. And honestly, I am going to be doing a wet soul video here at the end of this week. I'm going to start doing a weekly wet soul video. Because I did do a, um, a uh, poll and... Um, only eight people responded to the poll, which is totally fine, but the majority of the people wanted me to do weekly solds. Um, so I'm going to start doing that. Honestly, I'm kind of glad because when I do monthly solds, there's too many of them to do in one video. So this will give you guys more of a grasp of more of the items that we're selling too, which is one of the reasons why they might want me to do that. And I know when I watch solds, people who do weekly solds are definitely more popular than doing just the monthly solds. So I'm going to put out a weekly sold. Um, which I'm thankful for because um, we've been having some good sales. It was slow for a little bit, but we're going to talk about the reasons why I think it was slow for a little bit. Um, but yeah, I'm still doing like 10 pieces a day. I have changed some things though. And y'all know I do tweak and change on a very regular basis because we know that as resellers, things change, right? And it dawned on me a way that I could tweak my kids' lives to hopefully sell more during a live and make it better. So I'm going to share that with you too. But yeah, things have been good here. Not nearly as busy because our son's all moved in. He's got all of his stuff taken care of. Um, every once in a while we kind of help him with some things, but he's pretty much all done. So it's been giving me the ability to really focus on some things here. I'm also working on improving more YouTube, which I'm trying to get around to. Um, but because I'm tweaking and changing some things on my whatnot launches for kids clothes, that's been taking a little bit more time up front. But I do think it's going to be so worth, worth it. I'm doing my first show tonight, doing what I'm talking about doing, and I'll share that with you when we do the update here. So, yeah, things here are good. You'll see my slow video later this week. Um, so let's get to um, some topics this week, you guys. Um, 
I do want to kind of share, I have, I, I think I mentioned this last week. I was starting out, when I started out reselling, I started out using Vindu, list, you know, the listing platform to cross post. And I really enjoyed it. I really did enjoy it. And I decided um, to switch over to list perfectly last, like, was beginning of, um, beginning of the year this year. So I've been on it for a while, longer than I realized. Because I went back to see how long it had been. Um, and I just got done um, delisting all my items that were on Poshmark and Macari from List Perfectly. And I'm moving everything from, from, uh, from eBay now onto Vindu. But yeah, I spent about oh, two weeks kind of delisting everything, going through and checking things. So that took some time, but it was worth it. I chose to go onto List Perfectly for a few reasons. But I have found that using List Perfectly, you are able to delist and relist on List Perfectly. Now, if you, if you use List Perfectly for your cross listing platform, I'm not saying a negative if, if it works for your business model. But after being on it and remembering what Vindu does for me, I went back to Vindu because for my business model, Vindu works better for me. And I'm going to explain to you why. Um, but yeah, so I, I took some time. It was about maybe a week, week and a half. Um, because I had a lot listed on this perfectly. I delisted everything from Poshmark and Macari. That way, when I went off of this perfectly, you all know start everything on eBay anyway. This is why I did this. So now when I'm ending listings on eBay, I think I share with you guys why I do that. Everything is just now going to get relisted and taken over and brought over into Vindu. Because you can do that now on Vindu. You can take something that's on a platform and bring it over to Vindu and cross post that way. So I'm doing that with eBay now on Vindu. So I, and if I'm list, ending a listing, I'm just relisting back onto Vindu and cross posting on Poshmark and Macari and doing it that way. So everything is just on eBay now. And when I bring it over, which I'm bringing over multiples a day onto Vindu until everything's done, um, it's all getting cross posted back onto Macari and Poshmark. So that's how that's working. I chose to go back onto Vindu for a few reasons. Yes, you can cross post on this perfectly. But it's a much more involved process than it is on Vindu. Vindu is so quick. And on Vindu, you can cross list, sorry, you can delist and relist 10 items at a time. And it just does everything for you. You don't have to go into each listing and do all the things. It's so much quicker. List Perfectly, I was able to do that. But it took so much more time to do it the way List Perfectly does it. And I got to the point where I stopped cross listing or stop delisting and relisting my items. And I think that's made a difference in some of my sale issues that I've had to the spring and summer. We're gonna kind of go over that. So I am back on Vindu. If you are looking for a cross-listing platform, I do have a code or I have a link for you to be able to use that link to start out on Vindu. If you choose, after listening to how I use Vindu, if it works for your business model, great, let it be a blessing to you. If not, it's not a big deal. So I do have a link for you, um, for me to get a kickback if you choose to use that link and start it on Vindu and do that. Okay. Sales on platforms. I hope you all sales are picking up. We are now almost at the end of August, guys. Um, and I'm going to share with you my reasons why I think my sales have been okay, but not as good as they could be even with summer slowdown. I could be wrong, but we'll see. Um, delisting and relisting. Okay. Let's talk about this. I do think, even on Macari and, and eBay, and I did talk about this a little bit last week. Let's start off with, with eBay and then we'll switch over to Poshmark and Macari. We're going to talk a little bit about delisting and relisting. Even though Mac Poshmark is a platform based on sharing and delisting and relisting, I still think that if you're on Macari and eBay, freshening your listings on a regular basis is very important. Let's start off with eBay. eBay automatically ends your listing and renews it if you don't do it yourself after 30 days. But after you do that a few times, eventually that listing is kicked. And I know this because I have a lot of listings right now, old, old listings that I started out with when I first started on Vindu that were listed on eBay. And if you allow it, it gives you the ability on Vindu to have them notify you if the listing is no longer available on that platform because it's just cold. It's no longer listed. Vindu gives that ability to show you that. It'll actually put like a little um, yellow rectangle up in the top of the platform where that listing was listed, but it's now no longer listed. You need to go in there and end that listing and redo the listing again. 
I like that on Vindu, and I just learned that that's what that's for. And I didn't even realize I had my stuff to do that. I'm really glad I did. But I have some old listings on Vindu from way back when I first started out on Vindu, and I was listing on eBay. And I, it's got those yellow things on it, and I clicked on it. Sure enough, it shows on my eBay platform that listing is no longer available. So you just go through and you mark it not as listed, and then you just relist it. I like the fact that that shows me that on Vendu. It doesn't do that for me on list perfectly on any of my platforms. But now let's go back to eBay. Since it even it does refresh for you like we talked about. And I don't know how, how many times it refreshes for you. Maybe two or three, maybe four or five. I honestly don't know how many times it refreshes your listing after 30 days. But I do know that eventually if you don't do something with that listing, eBay will stop refreshing that listing for you. And that listing, like I just said, will now become no longer active and you think it's listed but that item isn't actually listed in your store because it now became what I call cold it's no longer active so um yeah so on on eBay for me now instead of waiting for that to happen and waiting for it to go rectangle on my venue showing me that it's no longer active I am now ending anything once it's coming up on expiring on a day, like if it's showing me you have this number of listings ending today, I go ahead and end those listings myself, and no, I don't think it affects your algorithm. I thought it did, but I am actually finding that when I end those listings, and I, I instead of saying relist the item, I say list similar, so it actually activates a whole new listing for you. So each of those listings, I will actually go through and say list similar, and I will completely refresh and put up a whole new listing on all those items that I ended, which definitely helps with the algorithm, on top of the 10 items I do on a daily basis anyway. So I don't, I don't wait for, for eBay to end the listing for me, refresh it. I'm doing that myself, so I don't have to go back through all of those old listings and see, oh, there's a yellow there, let's do this. It's automatically done each month for me. Okay, um, now Poshmark, we all know that Poshmark's algorithm focuses on sharing and delisting and relisting. My issue that I've been finding with Poshmark is that because of the way List Perfectly, you have to delist and relist your items and it takes so much more involved in doing that. On Vindu, I literally go through and pick 10 items, 10 items in a row that I want to delist and relist on Poshmark and Macari on Vindu. I click on take these items and delist to relist them. I pick 10 items and then I click on Poshmark and Macari. It lets you pick which of the um, platforms you have that item listed on that you want to delist and relist. I have eBay, Poshmark, and Macari. I don't need to worry about eBay because it's already taken care of. Poshmark and Macari. So I click on Poshmark and Macari and instantly Vendu takes those 10 items all together on both those platforms and delist and relist all those listings for me like within like a minute or two it's really quick and then I can click on the next 10 that I want to do and what I was doing before when I was on Vindu I did that about 10 times in the morning and 10 times at night and no Poshmark doesn't kick you for doing this some people say if you delist or relist or share too much I don't share to the point where I get noted for it I've never been noted from Poshmark for delisting or relisting too much or sharing too much Never. It's just never been a problem. Okay? So I usually do 10 of those pages of 10 items in the morning, and then I was doing 10 at night. So I was doing 200 delisting and relistings because you guys have to understand, I have over a thousand listings. I actually have less than that now. I have around a thousand now. But I'm in the process of refreshing a bunch. If I were to total everything, I'm probably at about 1,800 to 2,000 listings with everything that I have back here, okay? So I usually go through all of my listings in a week and delist and relist everything in a week. So I typically do 10 of those listings at night, 10 of them in the morning. I delist and relist 10 items on Poshmark and Macari. And it refreshes all those listings, plus it keeps re-kicking the algorithm brings everything back up fresh on my platforms. I stopped doing that when I was on List Perfectly because of the amount of time that was involved when List Perfectly does the delisting and relisting. And again, if you use it and it works for you, that's great. For me, it wasn't working for my platform and I'm just explaining why. Now that I'm back on Vindu, I've gone back to doing that again. 
I don't have enough listings up on Vindu yet to do that 10, 10 pages in the morning or 10 listings, 10 times 10 of those pages, right? Um, but I will be there shortly. So um, because I'm doing that again, I wasn't doing that when I first started out on Vindu, but I started doing that last, not this last spring, but the spring before that, when I was on Vindu first time. Okay, I'm sorry this is kind of a long explanation, but I think it's important for those of you who are on Vindu, the benefit of this this cross-listing. Um, so I had a lot more sales going on because things were being refreshed, and it was kicking the algorithm on Poshmark and Macari. So back when I was doing that, I noticed when I started doing that in that spring a year and a half ago, how many more sales I was getting because of the algorithm and all the fresh listings. So I am going to be doing that again. This is going to be one of my daily regular routines. Okay. So, and of course, like I said on Vindu, you just click on 10 each and it does both platforms for you within a minute or two. You click 10 more and however many you want to do that. I usually do that 10 times. So that's 100 listings in the morning and 100 listings in the evening. So my goal is to refresh all my listings once a week. I know some people think, think that that's overboard, but it was working for me. And I wasn't getting any notifications or any dings from Poshmark or anybody. Okay, nicer brands. We kind of talked about this a little bit last week. I was kind of bummed today because I've, I'm not going to tell you what the brand is yet, but I ordered a really nice box of clothing, women's clothing. And several weeks ago, I came on here telling you that I wasn't going to buy this brand because I thought the cog was too high. I had a discount. I used it and it was on sale, so I got it even cheaper than the original listing. And I think it's going to be worth it for me. Um, because like I told you, I'm working on doing nicer brands that sell at a higher price bracket. And even these pieces, if there are tanks or anything like that, that it's a smaller piece, I would still be able to at least make my cog back plus some extra money, even all of the sales for like maybe $20, $20 or $5 because my cog is low enough. So... I am really excited to get this box, you guys. So if you're not following me, please do give me a follow if you like unboxings on really nice high-end brands. I've got two boxes coming that I'm excited about. And y'all know I'm working on building up more higher-end brands. And I am going to be buying some nice high-end brand boxes on top of still buying from other resellers through the bins, being particular about what I get through there, um, to really bump up the types of items that I have in my closet. So the majority of my closet is selling at... $35 or more, or at least like $30 or more. I'm just kind of working on that figure. I don't want it to just be 20 or 25 or less. I want some nicer items to be making more profit and working less. So stay tuned for those unboxings, you guys. I'm super excited about it. But I am working more on nicer brands, and I'd like to get to the point where by the time the first of the year comes by, I have a lot more nicer brands in my closet so that next year, my year has a whole different dynamic in my my closet okay and I am working on doing sales on some of these other pieces back here now there are some pieces that might sell through sales but there are other brands back here that I do have discounted and sale and still selling that just might not sell because of the brand that it is and if it turns out not selling then I'll probably um, maybe try taking it like to buy sell trade if that doesn't work then I'll just take it to Goodwill or maybe give my church community or something like that I am trying to go through all the process of at least trying to get my cog back on the items. I have a lot of new attacks back here. A lot of it is Nordstrom, the BPs, Nordstrom brands and things like that, but some more boutique brands too. I'll probably try and take those to buy, sell, trade and see if they'll take it, at least get my cog back, at least get three or four dollars back for it and then take that money and reinvest it. So that's kind of where I'm at with all that. I think you guys already, are, already know all that. Okay, let's talk about something we haven't talked about before. When we're talking about sales, and I would love to know what you guys do. I'm excited about this. Two options. Daily deals. Now, I'm doing this on my jewelry because you all know I sell all new attacks jewelry. None of my jewelry is pre-owned. Um, and I'm actually thinking about getting some more jewelry, too, because of what I'm going to be doing here. Because um, I haven't sold a lot of jewelry lately, but I think my jewelry was overpriced. Um, I had it listed at like $25 a piece in fashion jewelry. I have since reduced my prices down to more like $15. Um, but I'm also doing another thing that I got from another reseller. She's fantastic and she does very, very well with her new tags boutique items. Um, it's daily deals. 
Now, what I mean by that, for example, what I'm doing with my jewelry is like three pieces of jewelry. Again, they're all new tags. Three pieces of jewelry you pick from my closet. I am going to do this through um, eBay and also through Macari because now, especially now the Macari bundles, and on eBay you can bundle too. Um, three pieces of jewelry for $35 with free shipping. Now, each of those pieces of jewelry will naturally be listed on their own for $15. Again, these are new tags pieces. So I'm going to offer three pieces. You add it to the cart and bundle three pieces. I'll do three for $35 with free shipping. So if my cog is super low, which it is, even with free shipping, I'm still going to be making a really good um, profit from each piece of jewelry and hopefully sell more jewelry because they're going to be wanting to do bundles. That's my goal. You can also do this with clothing. If you have certain, like, certain brands or certain types of clothing, maybe they're wool pieces or um, linen pieces, you know, pieces that have nice, nice cotton, things like that. Um, or brands, if you have pieces that like maybe made well, jeans or linen linen pants or sweaters or things like that, that have a commonality that are priced roughly the same price, say the $35 or $40 a piece for like maybe a pair of pants, and you have a lot of that brand in those pants, you can do something like this, figure out what your cog is, figure out what profit you need to make. I got this idea from this other gal too. Um, she does this with certain pieces, not all of her closet, but certain pieces, and she's kind of working on fine-tuning it. She does this with her sweaters. Um, where it thinks, for example, you have a lot of Everlane in your closet. You have a lot of Everlane, like basic, the neutral pants, blacks, tans, creams, khakis. You have like a whole bunch of those in your closet. Say you have like at least 40 pieces. You know, that helps you source boxes come in 40 pieces, right? This is just an example, y'all. And you have each of those pieces, just an example number, listed for $40, okay, um, or let's say $50, and you offer, say, three for, um, let's say, 100 bucks. Okay? I'm literally just throwing out numbers here, because if you have me each listed for 50 okay, so those three pieces would be 150 if they bought them all together, but you did, like, a three for $100 with free shipping, and your cog is only around 10 or $14 for those pieces, that gives you an opportunity to maybe sell more pieces for a great price and still make a great profit on those pieces and sell more items. See what I'm saying? Doing bundles on items like that, similar to the jewelry, um, on items that are in your closet. And another way you can do this is if you have items, we've talked about this before, that come in a box and they're basic tees, um, basic tanks, and you really can't sell them for very much individually. You could do this with kids clothes too. You take three of those items of the same size, um, like t-shirts, maybe v-neck t-shirts or crew neck t-shirts, they're the same size, but you can't really list them for much by themselves. So say you have three of those, and you bundle those three together in a listing, it's by itself. Now that I would do like three for something. I would just put them three in a picture and sell those three together instead of trying to sell one for like 10 or $12. Sell so like maybe three for 30 bucks or something like that, especially if your cog is only two or three dollars, right? So there's varying ways that you can try some multiple items and offer good deals to people and be creative with your closets or your stores and hopefully make more sales instead of just selling one item, right? You know when they do closet clear out on Poshmark? That's never worked for me. I know for some people it works great. I've done closet clear outs and it's just I've never really gotten any benefit from it. Even the other day, I sent out 35% off on anything $25 or more to all the people who have purchased from me before, which was like 2,800 people. Did it noted 2,800 people? And I didn't get one sale. I was so surprised. All I said was send me an offer for, on something $25 or more at 35% off and I'll give you a deal. Not one sale. I had one person put a whole bunch of likes and stuff in a bundle, but there was nothing that came from it. So I've done things like that before and gotten nothing from it. So, but my goal is I don't have to do that just on like on a Sunday, but they could continual repetitive sales throughout the week from items that they could put together and maybe bundle like that, right? So tell me in the comments below if you do something like this. 
And if you do, I would love to know how you bundle items together. Do like daily sales, do weekend sales or things like that. Again, you can do just weekend sales. Just have like your regular week where you just have it all listed and have your regular, say 20% off if somebody likes something. But I want to get to the point where I can offer daily deals on certain items so that people can bundle and have opportunity to buy more of the same thing. It gives them an opportunity to buy more than just one piece. That's kind of my objective, than just buying one piece here, one piece here, one piece here, right? And um, the gal that I follow that does this, um, she is a six-figure reseller. Now, she's been reselling a lot longer than I have. She's got a lot of experience. I've actually purchased um, a, uh, a uh, you know, how, when, when people do like, hey, this is how I do something, and they do like this teaching, you know, thing where you can buy it from them and learn how they did something. I did that a year and a half ago, and I got a lot of great tips from her doing that. Um, and this is partly what she, what she taught was how to do boutique on Poshmark. And I'm really glad I did that. I just, again, I think partially because I got away from Vindu, wasn't delisting and relisting. Um, I don't have a lot of freshness going on in my closets right now because I haven't been doing that. Even though I'm listing 10 items consistently every day, especially on Poshmark, delisting and relisting is just as important, I think, as sharing. And I haven't been consistently doing that. Okay. So bundling similar items. Again, we talked about that. Daily deals on jewelry and clothing pieces. And now, let's talk about community. And one of the reasons why I wanted to mention this, um, I'm not going to mention her name, but I am going to kind of do a shout out, thank you, thank you, thank you to her. She watches my videos, so I know she'll hear this. I've had a few other people reach out to me too, guys, personally on Instagram, sharing their concerns about something that maybe I listed or um, something on YouTube. Hey, I saw this and I thought you might want to know about this. Because you guys, I've only been uh, selling for two and a half years and full time a year and a half. I am still learning so much as a reseller. I've learned a ton in that time. But reselling is constantly changing and as a kind of a fairly still new reseller compared to a lot of other people, there's a lot about brands, styles, tips and tricks that I still have yet to learn. Somebody reached out to me, she let me know. There's some items that I had listed. Um, the main brand and sub-brand may not have been true to what was sold to me through the box that I got. She said, I just want to let you know that there's no sub-brand on this brand. And the way it's listed in your, pot, in, in your um, listings, you might get called on it because it may not be a true listing, a true brand. And I was like, oh my goodness. Because I researched this, this product when I bought it. And I did not know much about the brand. It's kind of a new, well, not a new brand to me, but I don't know a lot about the brand, right? I'm not trying to be cryptic, but I just, I'm trying to be careful. Um, so I reached out to her and said, wow, thank you so much for letting me know that. Because I knew that they had brands out there. And I kind of wondered about these because it didn't actually have the main brand on it. It just had the sub-brand. But the way she had it listed when I bought the box, she had a main brand and the sub-brand on it. And the gal told me, she says, they don't carry a sub-brand in this, but in this category. So it could have been, I ended up just listing Sparrow instead of Tory Burch. I'm just going to go ahead and say it. They were not actually Tory Burch Sparrow dresses. I have already sold a few of those pieces, and they're legit pieces. But instead of saying the Tory Burch Sparrow, because it doesn't actually say Tory Burch on the label. It just says Sparrow. So I went and re redid those listings. I'm still going to sell the dresses because they're good dresses. Um, but they're not necessarily Tory Burch Sparrow. They're just Sparrow dresses. So I learned something new that Tory Burch doesn't actually have a subcategory of, not subcategory, but a Sparrow. Um, you know, like anthropology has different things through anthropology revolve and things like that. I thought the Sparrow was through Tory Burch, and it is, but not in clothing from what she was saying. So I actually went through the Instead of putting Tory Burch on those items, I put just Sparrow on the items for the listings to make sure I was legitimately selling because on the tag it just says Sparrow. That it was legitimately in the listings just Sparrow. I have other pieces that are in my closet that actually have the Tory Burch logo. It says Tory Burch on the item. These items don't say Tory Burch anywhere. So I'm so glad she said something to me about that. And this is one of the reasons why I want to talk about community guys. I've had other times where other resellers have reached out and said, you may want to reevaluate this or look at this because this may not be good or this listing or something like that. You guys, I so appreciate that 
in the reselling community when somebody reaches out and says, I hope you don't think I'm overstepping, but I just want to share with you. This is what I've learned about this. If you didn't know this, I wanted to share it with you in case. Thank you. Thank you guys so much for sharing your, your experience, your knowledge, your wisdom, your discernment with me, those of you who have. Because we're all here learning. We all make mistakes. We all buy things sometimes thinking it's something else. Now, I will still be able to sell these pieces. They're still selling, okay? But I want to make sure my listings are accurate and true to what the listing should be. It's just like when you have a nice purse, you want to make sure it's a legitimate coach purse or whatever, right? Well, it dawned on me that because it didn't say Tori Birch on these pieces, she was right. I shouldn't list them as Tori Birch Sparrow. I should just list them as Sparrow. So thank you to the gal who did that. And thank you to those others of you who have reached out and, and shared your information with me, whether it's via Instagram or here on YouTube comments. I think the community and reselling is amazing. I really do. I've even had, share, had people share with me when I'm doing lives about brands, tips and tricks when we're talking about it, even on my lives. Because even if I'm selling kids clothes and we're having a quiet moment in the auction and people aren't actually requesting items, we're not auctioning up pieces. We've had some great conversation in our auctions about reselling. And I learned so much from you guys. I love the reselling community on YouTube, on Instagram, and any other places that, um, like even Facebook. I love the community where people are willing to say, hey, this may not be true, where, hey, I noticed this in your listing. I even had, I think I shared this with you guys a long time ago in my YouTube video, many, 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 many months ago. I had a gal reach out to me. She saw a listing on my eBay, and she personally reached out to me a message on eBay. She said, these shoes are really expensive shoes. I'm not sure if you know this, but what you have them listed at, you could double that and sell them for a really nice price. I had done some research, but I hadn't done a ton, so I dove into those shoe brands more. She was right. I doubled, and, and they weren't selling yet, so I did more research. I went in and I redid the listing. I bumped up the price to what she said I could list it. I double checked my comps. Her comps are very relevant to what I saw in the eBay listings. And sure enough, those sold, not only did they sell, but they sold out of country to an amazing gal who absolutely loved the shoes, was so glad she found them. And I sold them for a really good profit. It was double what I had to normally list it for. This is what I'm talking about. If you see something that could be a blessing to somebody else or some wisdom, now, my question, though, is if somebody reaches out to you like that, are you receptive to that information? I hope we are. Because there's a lot of great information that other resellers have that we don't. Maybe information that hopefully maybe I have that's a blessing to you. Information that you have is just a blessing to me. It's one of the reasons why I love this YouTube channel so much and other YouTube channels. Because I comment on other people's YouTube channels, too, you guys. I learned so much from so many other people. The reselling community is so amazing. What we can teach each other, what we can learn from each other, sharing that information, sharing that knowledge and that wisdom, and being open as a reseller to saying, hey, let me take a look at this. If this is true, thank you so much for bringing this to my attention. And being open to that and it being a blessing to your reselling business it could make more money for you or it could keep you from having an issue with the platform. You guys, that's probably what this is about, right? So I just wanted to bring that to your attention. Um, I honestly do think the reselling community is just amazing. Again, whether I'm on lives, YouTube, Instagram, it's just a great community, a great connection. People are supportive of each other. Every once in a while you do kind of run into some negative, but that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about those who do give positive encouragement and support with each other. So if you have something that you know that maybe be a blessing to another reseller, I encourage you to maybe reach out to them and share that information with them. And if you receive something from another reseller, guys, be open to what they have to say. Do the research on what they're talking about. And if the research is true to what they're saying, thank them for reaching out to you and giving you something that's a blessing to your reselling business, right? Okay, guys, that's what I have for today. I love these weekly reseller chats, you guys. And again, I am working. I haven't mentioned for a couple weeks. I haven't had time. But I am working on another opportunity for you guys. Um, between my Wetzel videos, unboxings, something that I'm working on, 
and the weekly reseller chats and all the other tips and tricks. I have some other videos that have been sitting in my background um, that I want to work on that I've been talking about for a couple of months, just have not had time to get to them. Now that I've switched everything over to, um, to Vindu, my next big project, y'all, is going through my inventory back here, making sure that all the pieces that I have listed in my inventory are actually listed in eBay. Because we all know, whether it's Macari, Poshmark, or eBay, sometimes listings just get kicked. So I'm going to go back here. My next big project is to go through each bin, one bin at a time, one bag at a time, double check all those items in those bags and make sure that they are listed. And if not, start taking time to go through and do new fresh pictures on top of what I'm working on a daily basis with my regular listings and make sure that all, everything that is back here is actually listed that I do want listed. That's my next project. Just refreshing my inventory, double checking my inventory. I haven't done this since I've been a reseller and I just want to make sure I know from my mind and my heart that everything back there is listed. I want to know how often you check your inventory. I would love to know how often you check your inventory. I don't actually do spreadsheet. Everything is through my listing platform and we all know that through um, computer stuff, things can get glitched. Sometimes they can get kicked, whether it's a platform, cross listing platform. So I'm going to be double checking all that. That's my next big objective. Um, and yeah, that's probably going to take some time, but it's definitely worth it and definitely important. And while I'm doing that, I might even just take some pieces that I know just won't list properly or won't sell properly. I may even just pull them, take, send them off to Google so it'll be a good way for me to be able to also go through and flush some inventory as well. So, guys, tell me in the comments below what in this video was a blessing to you the most. And share with me um, your selling ideas. How do you do your bundles? How do you do your sales? Um, do you do, like, um, daily sales? Um, hey, buy so many items and, and do this. Or do you just do, like, weekly sales through Poshmark? Does that work for you? Do you get a lot of sales through that? I would love to know how you guys do that. Um, and, um, what else? Yeah, I think that's it, guys. Um, thank you so much, you guys, for being here. I will see you in the next one. Guys, feel free to subscribe, to give this uh, thumb, video a thumbs up, and we'll see you next time. Instead of putting Tory Birch on those items, I put just Sparrow on the items for the listings to make sure I was legitimately selling, because on the tag, it just says Sparrow that it was legitimately in the listings just barrel. I have other pieces that are in my closet that actually have the Tory Burch logo. It says Tory Burch on the item. These items don't say Tory Burch anywhere. So I'm so glad she says something to me about that. And this is one of the reasons why I want to talk about community, guys. I've had other times where other resellers have reached out and said, you may want to reevaluate this or look at this because this may not be good or this listing or something like that. You guys, I so appreciate that in the reselling community when somebody reaches out and says, I hope you don't think I'm overstepping, but I just want to share with you. This is what I've learned about this. If you didn't know this, I want to share it with you in case. Thank you. Thank you guys so much for sharing your, your experience, your knowledge, your wisdom, your discernment with me, those of you who have, because we're all here learning. We all make mistakes. We all buy things sometimes thinking it's something else. Now, I will still be able to sell these pieces. They're still selling, okay? But I want to make sure my listings are accurate and true to what the listing should be. It's just like when you have a nice purse, you want to make sure it's a legitimate coach purse or whatever, right? Well, it dawned on me that because it didn't say Tory Burch on these pieces, she was right. I shouldn't list them as Tory Burch Sparrow. I should just list them as Sparrow. So thank you to the gal who did that. And thank you to those others of you who have reached out and, and shared your information with me, whether it's via Instagram or here on YouTube comments. I think the community and reselling is amazing. I really do. I've even had, share, had people share with me when I'm doing lives about brands, tips and tricks when we're talking about it, even on my lives. Because even if I'm selling kids clothes, and we're having a quiet moment in the auction and people aren't actually requesting items. We're not auctioning off pieces. We've had some great conversation in our auctions about reselling. And I learned so much from you guys. I love the reselling community on YouTube, on Instagram, and any other places that, um, like even Facebook. I love the community where people are willing to say, hey, this may not be true. Where, hey, I noticed this in your listing. 
I even had, I think I shared this with you guys a long time ago in my YouTube video, many, 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 many months ago. I had a gal reach out to me. She saw a listing on my eBay and she personally reached out to me a message on eBay. She said, these shoes are really expensive shoes. I'm not sure if you know this, but what you have them listed at, you could double that and sell them for a really nice price. I had done some research, but I hadn't done a ton, so I dove into those shoe brands more. She was right. I doubled, and, and they weren't selling yet, so I did more research. I went in and I redid the listing. I bumped up the price to what she said I could list it at. I double checked my comps. Her comps are very relevant to what I saw in the eBay listings, and sure enough, those sold. Not only did they sell, but they sold out of country to an amazing gal who absolutely loved the shoes, was so glad she found them, and I sold them for a really good profit. It was double what I had normally listed for. This is what I'm talking about. If you see something that could be a blessing to somebody else or some wisdom. Now, my question, though, is if somebody reaches out to you like that, are you receptive to that information? I hope we are. Because there's a lot of great information that other resellers have that we don't. Maybe information that hopefully maybe I have that's a blessing to you. Information that you have is just a blessing to me. It's one of the reasons why I love this YouTube channel so much and other YouTube channels. Because I comment on other people's YouTube channels too, you guys. I learned so much from so many other people. The reselling community is so amazing. What we can teach each other, what we can learn from each other. Sharing that information, sharing that knowledge and that wisdom. And being open as a reseller to saying, hey, let me take a look at this. If this is true, thank you so much for bringing this to my attention. And being open to that and it being a blessing to your reselling business could make more money for you or it could keep you from having an issue with the platform. You guys, that's partly what this is about, right? So I just wanted to bring that to your attention. Um, I honestly do think the reselling community is just amazing. Again, whether I'm on lives, YouTube, Instagram, it's just a great community, a great connection. People are supportive of each other. Every once in a while you do kind of run into some negative, but that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about those who do give positive encouragement and support with each other. So if you have something that you know that maybe be a blessing to another reseller, I encourage you to maybe reach out to them and share that information with them. And if you receive something from another reseller, guys, be open to what they have to say. Do the research on what they're talking about. And if the research is true to what they're saying, thank them for reaching out to you and giving you something that's a blessing to your reselling business, right? Okay, guys, that's what I have for today. I love these weekly reseller chats, you guys. And again, I am working, I haven't mentioned for a couple weeks, I haven't had time, but I am working on another opportunity for you guys. Um, between my wet soul videos, unboxings, something that I'm working on, and the weekly reseller chats and all the other tips and tricks. I have some other videos that have been sitting in my background um, that I want to work on that I've been talking about for a couple of months. Just have not had time to get to them. Now that I've switched everything over to, um, to Vindu, my next big project, y'all, is going through my inventory back here. Making sure that all the pieces that I have listed in my inventory are actually listed in eBay. Because we all know, whether it's Macari, Poshmark, or eBay, sometimes listings just get kicked. So I'm going to go back here. My next big project is to go through each bin, one bin at a time, one bag at a time. Double check all those items in those bags and make sure that they are listed. And if not, start taking time to go through and do new fresh pictures on top of what I'm working on a daily basis with my regular listings. And make sure that all, everything that is back here is actually listed that I do want listed. That's my next project. Just refreshing my inventory, double checking my inventory. I haven't done this since I've been a reseller and I just wanna make sure I know it from my mind and my heart that everything back there is listed. I wanna know how often you check your inventory. I would love to know how often you check your inventory. I don't actually do spreadsheet. Everything is through my listing platform and we all know that through um, computer stuff, things can get glitched. Sometimes they can get kicked, whether it's a platform, cross-listing platform. So I'm gonna be double checking all that. That's my next big objective. Um, and yeah, that's probably gonna take some time but it's definitely worth it and definitely important. And while I'm doing that, I might even just take some pieces that I know just won't list properly or won't sell properly. I may even just pull them, take, send them off to Google so it'll be a good way for me to be able to also go through and flush some inventory as well. So guys, tell me in the comments below what in this video was a blessing to you the most. And share with me 
Um, your selling ideas. How do you do your bundles? How do you do your sales? Um, do you do like um, daily sales? Um, hey, buy so many items and, and do this. Or do you just do like weekly sales through Poshmark? Does that work for you? Do you get a lot of sales through that? I would love to know how you guys do that. Um, and um, what else? Yeah, I think that's it, guys. Um, thank you so much, you guys, for being here. I will see you in the next one. Guys, feel free to subscribe, to give this uh, thumb video a thumbs up, and we'll see you next time.